Step into the charm of the world of Henry Orient, a 1964 film that weaves a delightful narrative around two teenage girls, Val and Gil, and their unexpected encounter with the eccentric concert pianist Henry Orient. As we explore this cinematic gem, one might wonder, can you recall a cherished memory associated with this classic? Perhaps a moment that left an indelible mark on your own world? This cinematic journey invites reflection on the impact it may have had on your life. Were you inspired by the comedic escapades or touched by the enduring friendships portrayed on screen? We're eager to hear your personal stories and memories show the world of Henry Orient became a part of your own world. Share your experiences in the comments below. Now, let's dive into some captivating details about the film. Did you know that the screenplay is based on the novel of the same name by Nora Johnson? Directed by George Roy Hill, the movie not only captures the essence of adolescent friendships, but also provides a whimsical exploration of New York City in the 1960s. As we unravel the layers of this cinematic masterpiece, consider the impact it had on the cultural landscape of its time. The stellar performances by the cast, including Peter Sellers as Henry Orient, add a timeless charm to the narrative. Now, back to Yao, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the world of Henry Orient? Your stories contribute to the rich tapestry of memories associated with this film. Share your thoughts and reminisce about the magic it brought into your life in the comments below. And there you have eat a glimpse into the world of the world of Henry Orient, a film that continues to resonate with audiences. So, what's your story? We would love to hear your memories and experiences. Share them below and let's celebrate the enduring magic of this cinematic gem. Amidst the challenges faced by producer Jerem Hellman during the production of The World of Henry Orient, issues with craft unions and scheduling conflicts due to Peter Sellers' prior commitments stood out. Sellers, known for his comedic prowess, signed on for the lead role in May 1963, marking his debut in American cinema. Interestingly, the role was initially intended for Rex Harrison, but he declined, citing its perceived lack of significance. Johnson, the film's writer, had envisioned Harrison in the role, expressing reservations about Sellers' broad interpretation. Despite this, Sellers became available after missing another job opportunity due to a broken ankle. The casting decision, though unconventional, set the tone for the film's unique comedic flavor. Tom Bosley and Dame Angela Lansbury, both part of the cast, later shared the screen in Murder, she wrote in 1984, adding a postscript to the film's legacy. In retrospect, the production hurdles and casting choices underscore the intricate process behind bringing the world of Henry Orient to life, offering a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes dynamics that shape this classic comedy. Delving into the production of this classic comedy, a noteworthy aspect was the initial uncertainty surrounding the casting of the lead character, Henry Orient. A range of prominent actors, including David Wayne, Robert Preston, Gig Young, Sir Rex Harrison, Tony Randall, and Dick Van, were considered for this pivotal role. This selection process highlights the film's potential for different interpretations and styles, given the diverse acting backgrounds and skills of these actors. Each candidate brought his unique flair, which could have significantly altered the film's direction and tone. The eventual casting of Peter Sellers, known for his distinct comedic style, undoubtedly shaped the film into the memorable classic it is today. This insight into the casting process sheds light on the complexities and deliberations that go into shaping a character, especially in a film where the lead role is central to its success and appeal. Transitioning smoothly from the casting intricacies and production challenges, another intriguing facet of the film is its inclusion in the American Film Institute's 2000 list of the 500 movies nominated for the top 100 funniest American movies. This recognition reflects the film's enduring impact on American comedy cinema. Its blend of humor and heart exemplified by Peter Sellers' performance resonates with audiences even decades after its release. The film's ability to weave comedic elements with touching moments of adolescence speaks to its broad appeal and the skillful direction of George Roy Hill. This nomination not only honors the film's comedic achievements, but also signifies its place in the pantheon of classic American comedies, showcasing a blend of humor and storytelling that continues to be celebrated. Delving into the unique aspects of the film, a notable highlight is its innovative use of cinematography, particularly in the opening sequences. Director George Roy Hill, known for his meticulous approach, utilized a creative combination of trampolines and slow-motion techniques. 
This method was not just a cinematic first in American commercial features, but it also effectively captured the essence of carefree childhood. These scenes set in Central Park are not only visually captivating, but also symbolize the unbridled joy and freedom of youth. This approach, as recalled by screenwriter Johnson, added a distinctive quality to the film, transforming simple scenes into a tribute to the exuberance of adolescence and the vibrancy of New York City. Hill's dedication to pushing the boundaries of traditional filmmaking played a crucial role in crafting these memorable sequences, leaving a lasting impact on the audience and setting a precedent in film techniques. In the making of the film, a notable yet often overlooked detail is the use of the Eric Hoffman in Henry Orient's bedroom scenes. This phone, manufactured by LM, Ericsson of Sweden, represented a stark contrast to the typical American telephones of that era, predominantly controlled by Bell Telephone. The Eric Hoffman's inclusion in the movie was significant, as it was one of the rare foreign phones allowed in the U.S. at the time. Bell Telephone, holding a monopoly on telephone services and equipment, perceived the innovative design of the Eric Hoffman as a potential threat. This led to the development of the Trimline phone, a direct response to the growing influence of European designs in the American telephone market. This aspect of the film not only adds a layer of authenticity to the setting, but also subtly reflects the cultural and technological influences of the time, bridging the gap between American and European design sensibilities. Focusing on the film's musical landscape, Elmer Bernstein's involvement as the composer is a significant highlight. Bernstein, renowned for his dramatic compositions in iconic films like The Magnificent Seven and To Kill a Mockingbird, ventured into comedy with this project. His previous works, particularly the score for To Kill a Mockingbird, are celebrated for their emotional depth and have secured a place among the most esteemed film scores. This collaboration with director George Roy Hill marked a turning point in Bernstein's career, as he would go on to dominate the comedy genre in subsequent years. His later works in films such as Stripes, Ghostbusters, Animal House, Trading Places, and Thoroughly Modern Millie, the latter earning him an Oscar, are testament to his versatility and mastery in musical composition. Bernstein's contribution to this film set a precedent for his future endeavors in the comedy genre and underscored his ability to enhance the cinematic experience through his musical scores, contributing significantly to the film's enduring appeal. As the final credits of the world of Henry Orient roll across the screen, carrying with them the echoes of a bygone era, we find ourselves lingering in the nostalgic hues of this cinematic gem. This film, more than just a story, serves as a time capsule, capturing the essence of a period that many of us hold dear. I invite you, the viewer, to pause for a moment and reflect on how this charming tale has touched your life. Perhaps you found a piece of your own childhood mirrored in the whimsical adventures of Val and Gil. Or maybe the eccentric character of Henry Orient himself sparked a chord of laughter and joy within your heart. Each of us has our unique tapestry of memories and emotions tied to this film and it's in sharing these personal threads that we keep the spirit of the story alive and vibrant. I encourage you to share your favorite moments or thoughts about this classic. Was it the music, the vibrant colors of the 60s, or the heartfelt performances that resonated with you the most? Your reflections not only celebrate the film, but also connect us through shared nostalgia and appreciation. Thank you for taking this journey back in time with the world of Henry Orient. Your time and interest in revisiting this classic are deeply appreciated. Remember, every film is not just a story told, but a memory made. Keep those memories alive by sharing them, as each one is a tribute to the timeless magic of cinema.